at those and select so many pieces, and then those pieces go on. And if I have was lucky twice that I got selected to win that. Well, that's the awards there in oh, yeah. 92 for excellence in clay. And they were raku pieces. Similar to this one was uh, one of them. And how do you end up, is it, so is that the glaze there to make a drawing like that? or That is just left unglazed. Oh, okay. The white pot, but because you're putting it into the smoke, such an intense smoke in that pail, mm-hmm. the white clay stains black. So that then stays. Oh, okay. So that was just left unglazed. So I wax that figure on, and then when I glaze the pot, I don't get any glaze where it's waxed. Oh, yeah. And the inside of this is just left raw clay. And then when after the first firing, I put another coat of clay over it, and it dries and cracks like a mud on top of it. Mm-hmm. So when it comes out of the fire, and you, again, into the smoke where it's cracked, the smoke gets between the cracks and stains it, and yet it doesn't work white. And then that doesn't stick that other clay in there, and you just peel it all off. Uh-huh. It gives you that effect. Again, a lot of work, but uh, I think it's worth it. And you, you've you done kind of workshops or in kind of a yeah, hobby I, before? Not since I've been here, but in Regina, I've yeah. done workshops. I used to teach classes. To oh, okay. But y- did you ever like get a uh, kind of a, um, education in pottery? Kind no, of, I don't yeah. have a finance yeah. degree or anything. Yeah. Like no. Because it started just as a hobby for yeah. me. Yeah. I took my um, classes at the University of Virginia Extension. Oh, okay. They had a program there. So cool. And I was lucky just to get in the last couple of years before it closed up. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you'd, uh, the city offers classes there, but they don't really go anywhere. They give the people a little bit of instruction on a wheel, but they don't really get mm-hmm. into the fire, and they don't let them fire their pots. And okay. So I was lucky to get a pretty good start in it through there. And then there was a, a good guild in Regina, and a couple of the girls there actually built a big kiln in a warehouse and would rent it out if you wanted to hire oh, it. So cool. I was able to sort of get a good start that way. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff you have to... And do you, do you, uh, do you uh, break pots kind of like often or... <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> With that being said, I had one of those pieces a year ago at the Vernon Show and we take these shelves down and set up. I don't know if you've ever gone through that show. It's in three buildings in Vernon. And I wanted to move it from one side to the other. So I picked it up, which I shouldn't do in the, in the holder, oh. and I think tipped forward on me and come down and smashed on the floor. So that was one hundred and sixty-five dollars breakage. Oh, but well, I meant like when you're putting it in the kiln and stuff, yeah, like too hot you get a little and bit more yeah, because you're taking it out hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, round pieces like this, you don't get much plates sometimes, and because of that fast heating and cooling, if you could, when you make a piece, if you can keep the clay a uniform thickness throughout, don't have it thick down here at the foot. And then thin out here, it'll crack. Oh, okay. The time. But with Raku, you'd have a little bit more loss. This plate over here in the window is one that's gotten cracked. Oh, okay. So it won't, I won't sell it. It's not for sale. Sometimes they're hard to find. I've highlighted this one with oh. something I rubbed in it. but mm-hmm. So it's definitely cracked. But it's, you know, it's a beautiful piece. But it's yeah. Cool. What can you do with it? People come and they want to buy that kind of stuff, but I don't usually sell it. Mm. They want like a discounted.